Welcome to my cellar. I'm Matthew Fagan of winesandtunes.com and I hope you're as excited as I am to try some Sicilian wines and talk about Sicily. Sicily is the first of 20 regions in Italy that we are going to be covering. We're going to be starting from south to north each week. And I wanted to start in Sicily, not just because it, it really is one of my favorite regions of Italy, but I find that it's a very approachable region. If you like California wines, if you like South American wines, a lot of the reds are gonna be very much along that style, more of a darker fruit style. But really, also, Sicily has such a huge diversity in climate. You have really warm desert-like climates all, all the way over to the west, and you have Mediterranean climates throughout because it is the largest island in all of the Mediterranean. Uh, as well as 3,000 feet above sea level, you have Mount Etna. So these huge contrasts in climate are really fascinating and it's a great region. And it's pretty approachable in terms of what you need to know. Mostly, like other regions in Italy, as I mentioned in the intro to Italian wines, which I recommend you seeing first, there's a lot of DOC and DOCG. It can be a little confusing. Here in Sicily, it's heavy emphasis on the varietals. So you're gonna be talking about the grapes more so than the DOC and DOCGs. That being said, let's dive into Sicily. In this video, you're going to learn the Sicilian wine regions you need to know, the Sicilian grape varietals that are most important, as well as how to read a Sicilian wine label, as well as some food pairings. Sicily is the southernmost tip of Italy. It's actually closer to West Africa than Rome. Over the centuries, Sicily has been influenced by many other cultures, from the Phoenicians, the Greeks, to the Romans, the Arabs, to the Normans, the Germans, and even the Spanish. Sicily's mild Mediterranean climate give it a real advantage to producing grapes. 261,000 acres of vineyards exist, making it one of the largest grape producing regions in all of Italy. However, only less than 10% of those grapes go to producing fine wine. The rest go to the bulk markets and Marsala production. There are 23 DOC appellations in Sicily and only one DOCG appellation. Most notable are Etna, Vittoria, Noto, and Faro. However, what's more important than knowing these subregions is knowing the grape varietals, as that is the best way to start with Sicily. Surprisingly, two thirds of Italy's grape production is dedicated towards white grapes. The Catarato grape is not only the most popular white grape produced, it's the most popular grape produced hands down in all of Sicily. And while outside of Sicily, you won't see this Catarato on its own, it's always blended with other grapes, such as this label here, you can see it's Catarato and Pinot Grigio. It's a silent player and it's in a lot of wines, especially Marsala wine. Grillo. Grillo can be very aromatic with notes of passion fruit, grapefruit, and herbs like thyme. This is probably the most full bodied of the white wines of Sicily. Inzoglia. Inzoglia is a crisp and dry white wine with nutty, citrusy overtones. Caricante. Last but by no means least, many believe this grape has been growing on the volcanic slopes of Mount Etna for over a thousand years. Some vineyards on Etna are growing grapes as high as 4,000 feet above sea level. These grapes, the Caricante, do very well at this high altitude with the volcanic soil. It produces a wine that is high in acidity, minerality. It's got refreshing citrus and minty aromas with just a silky and lush mouthfeel. Moving on to the red grapes of Sicily, there's quite a variety and difference in styles. The most popular red wine of Sicily is Nero di Avola, literally translates into the black of Avola the black color of the grape 
and Avila is a coastal city on the eastern side of Sicily. This is a very approachable red wine, uh, more of the blackberry and chocolate style, similar to South American wines and American wines. Next up is Frappato. Frappato is a lighter style, more uh, similar to a Pinot Noir. It has some light cherry notes to it, very easy drinking and lighter. Narello Mascalese is a similar in flavor profile to the Frappato with the cherry notes and so forth, but very full bodied as it has a higher level of tannins. Some of the best Narello comes from Mount Etna at those high altitudes with the volcanic soil. Pedicone is a varietal that almost went extinct. It's the oldest red varietal of Sicily, an indigenous grape that is a darker style, full bodied, well worth trying if you can find a bottle. It's hopefully making a resurgence. As I mentioned earlier, there are 23 DOC regions and only one DOCG region, and that is Cerisuolo di Vittoria. With just over 400 acres, the requirement here is to come from the Vittoria zone and be 50 to 70% Nero de Avila and the balance of Frappato. Here's an example of a label. There is also a Classico zone within Cerisuolo di Vittoria. Now let's break down the back of this label. Here you have at the top, circled in blue, Nero de Avola, which is the grape type, Terre Siciliane, which is the classification. And that classification is an Indicazione Geografica Tipica, or IGT. This means, Terre Siciliane, means that it can come from anywhere throughout Sicily. It is not coming from one specific zone. Now the grape here is Nero de Avola, but that Nero de Avola can come from anywhere. This is a very common classification on the back of a label, Terre Siciliane. Let's take a look at this label. As you can see, third line down is Sicilia DOC. The significance of this DOC is to promote the indigenous varietals of Sicily. So big and bold up top here is Pedicone. This should taste like a Pedicone. And even though it still can come from many places throughout the island, the goal here is to promote the style of that varietal. And here's another example of a Sicilia DOC promoting a frappato. This should taste like a frappato. And this is an Etna Rosso. You can see below Etna Rosso, it says Denominazione di Origine Controllata or DOC. And this Etna Rosso must come from the Etna region and be comprised primarily of Norello Mascalese. Let's taste some wines. So here we have our Grillo. So the Grillo, this Grillo, the Colosi Grillo is about 12 to $13 a bottle. It's coming from the northeast part of the island in Faro is the region. And this is on the nose, you really have beautiful tropical smell to it. It's a, uh, you get lemony, not lemon zest, but more lemon, like baked, like a baked lemon tart. You have a lot of fruit, a lot of sweetness to it. It's um, some herbs, I get like tarragon in the nose as well, but um, heavy pineapple notes, very tropical and um, really smells nice. Let's um, give it a taste. Yeah, not as, it's got the tropical notes on the palate, but not as sweet as you might think because it does have a lot of that baked apple as well as the pineapple notes. It has really nice acidity. You can feel that acidity on the sides um, of your tongue there. It makes you salivate a little bit like you want to eat something. You have more minerality to it than I would have suspected when, when smelling it, but uh, this would pair well with any sort of seafood, of course, but particularly grilled item because grilled items because it has a little bit more of a full bodiness 
and not quite as high of the acidity as some of the whites tend to have in Italy. This would do really well with like a grilled chicken dish or um, any sort of grilled seafood just because it has a little bit more body to it. But uh, for $12, $13, it's a great bottle. And all of these wines, by the way, there'll be links below to some something, maybe not this brand, but something close to it and some various links if you can't find it in your uh, store. Now we have our Etna Bianco. So the Etna Bianco is primarily Caricante is the grape here. Caricante, I haven't met a Caricante I haven't, uh, I haven't liked, I have to say. And this is coming from Mount Etna, about 2,000 feet above sea level. And uh, uh, this is one of my favorite, I'm a little biased towards this, is one of my favorite white wines of Italy. It is um, really interesting nose. This has like a licorice, black licorice, almost an anise sort of flavor to it. Now, I don't like black licorice. It's a really mild licorice sort of uh, scent in the nose. And almost uh, kind of a menth like a menthol-y or minty menthol-y um, scent as well. It's really dusty in a good way. Wow. It's interesting. It's, it's, uh, it's very different. And you get that from that volcanic ash and at that high altitude. It's very unique. Wow, that is great. This, you, you have to have this with shellfish raw, shellfish oysters. If you love raw oysters, this is your wine right here. Uh, seafood, of course, I don't think it would, I would cross over with this on any other thing than seafood. I mean, it's so crisp, so minerally, um, great acidity and stone fruit. You get that really nice stone fruit and acidity to it so well balanced and I don't know whether I'm romanticizing the fact that this is from Mount Etna 2,000 feet above sea level one of the highest altitudes 3,000 feet in Italy right there on the island of Sicily it's very exciting but um, such a nice wine I highly recommend getting this anytime you can find it it's, they're not that common so check the links below but really interesting uh, both of these whites, actually more so the, the first, the Grillo, is going to go with the um, seafood salad recipe that I'm going to make specifically for these wines. Um, go more with the Grillo than the Caricante, I think, just because it's got a little bit more of that tropical uh, essence to it. But this, of course, would work well with it. Delicious. Let's move on to the reds. Here we have a Frappato. So the Frappato is, uh, it is light. You can see in its, its, I don't know if you can see that, dropped a little, <laughs> I don't know if you can see that there, but um, it's light, like a Pinot Noir, it, it, weight, when we talk about wine weight, you wanna look at it as, say, heavy cream would be heavier in the mouthfeel, milk, and then say 1% milk, so the lighter weight that you have, uh, would best describe, this is a lighter weight style wine, and uh, yeah, you get some nice herbal notes to it, some bright cherry notes, a little bit of raspberry. This is often uh, chilled, like you would chill a Pinot Noir uh, and served with um, tuna in Sicily. Grilled tuna steaks is something that's very popular with. Let's taste it and see. That's, has a little tartness to it, has that nice acidity to it, nice weight. It is really very similar to a Pinot Noir. More so in the US it would be like Oregon style Pinot Noir or a French style Pinot Noir. But nice, light, tart, bright, good acidity, good food wine. Again, this um, 
I've actually decided to pair this with, uh, I'm making an eggplant caponata, which is uh, has a little bit of um, sweet and sour, sort of agrodolce style to it. This works well with that because it has that cherry flavor to it, that light cherry flavor. So stay tuned for that recipe for this. Let's move on to our next red. This is nice. Okay, on to Nero da Avola. So the Nero da Avola is the most popular red grape of Sicily. And most likely, the maybe the only, if you go into one of your local stores, this may be the only type of wine that they have from Sicily. It truly is the king of red wines in Sicily. Not necessarily by quality, but by its, you know, its pure dominance in the market. Um, this is a great wine if you're looking to get into starting in the Italian wines. It's very approachable. Uh, it's, you can see it's darker style fruit. You get um, more of those chocolatey notes. Chocolatey. You're getting a lot of that darker fruit style. Actually, it's more like a boysenberry kind of uh, fruit to it. But it's... Uh, this one almost has sort of a gaminess to it. Let's have a taste. Wow. That's kind of more of a rhubarb kind of taste to it. It's interesting. But this is great. I, I never realized how much this is similar to a Malbec from Argentina. It's very similar to that style, um, and which is very approachable. But this is a, a great food wine. It goes with a, a, a lot of different dishes. This would also pair well with the eggplant caponata that I'm making. And uh, yeah, this is great. Easy drinking, approachable, something that you're gonna see uh, pretty much anywhere that has an Italian wine section, they should have a Nero da Avola in it. Okay, on to our next red. And here we have our Etna Rosso. We had the Etna Bianco with the Caricante grape, and here we have an Etna Rosso featuring the Norello Mascalese. Norello Mascalese, and this again is coming from the high altitude, 2,000, 3,000 feet above sea level at Mount Etna, an active volcano. So uh, this, is a, this is a serious red, and uh, you get, I'm getting that, I'm also, I'm getting that mintiness or that uh, menthol eucalyptus sort of uh, smell that I got from the Etna Bianco, so that's definitely something coming from the volcanic soil and some nice uh, cherry, cherry notes here, some red berry notes, but very herbal, very herbal. Let's give it a taste. Wow, this wine has a lot of grip. It's a big wine. This is not a wine that I recommend you starting with. This is really a special wine with a lot of tannins to it. See some barrel aging. This is something if you have a special occasion, uh, this is a great meat pairing dish. It's very dry, nice style. I hate to jump forward to Northern Italy, but at some point we are gonna be talking about the king of wines in Italy and the wine for kings, and that is Barolo. This. It is very similar in style to a Barolo at a lot less money. Very, uh, very nice style wine. And uh, again, not for everyone. It's dry. It's a uh, beautiful wine. Again, great for grilling and, and, and chilling. Uh, and one wine I did not mention here, we didn't talk about Marsala. Marsala comes from Sicily comes from the far west corner of Sicily, and I'm leaving that on to a separate video on its own. That's going to be the next video, is just a little something on Marsala wine. I didn't want to confuse and put too many wines in this video, uh, but we will be talking about that next. Hopefully, 
you found some value in this video and you're very excited about Sicilian wines as I am, and I hope that you will join me on the next voyage moving north to our next stop in Italy. Until next time, see you in my cellar. Salute.